Hello, I thought we would try another Roald Dahl. I'm going to read it in stages. I'm going to try with the first four chapters. They're very small um, and then um, we'll do it in stages. So this is the Twits. You might have heard of the Twits. Uh, you're going to meet these wonderful characters. So this is Roald Dahl and the Twits and the first chapter is called Hairy Faces. What a lot of hairy faced men there are around these these days. When a man grows hair all over his face, it's quite impossible to tell what he really looks like. Possibly, perhaps, that's why he does it. He'd rather you didn't know. Then there's the problem of washing. When the very hairy ones wash their faces, it must be as big a job as when you or I wash the hair on our heads. So what I want to know is this. How often do these hairy men wash their faces? Is it only once a week like us on Sunday nights? And do they shampoo it? Do they use a hairdryer? Do they rub hair tonic in to stop their faces from going bald? Do they go to a barber or ha to have their hairy faces cut and trimmed? Or do they do it themselves in front of the mirror with a pair of nail scissors? I don't know. But next time you see a man with a hairy face, which will probably be as soon as you leave your front door, maybe you will look at, uh, look at him more closely and start wondering about some of these things. Mr Twit. And there he is. Mr Twit was one of these very hairy men. The whole of his face, except for his forehead, his eyes and his nose was covered with thick hair. The stuff even sprouted in revolting tufts out of his nostrils and ear holes. Mr Twit felt that this hairiness made him look terrifically wise and grand. But in truth, he was neither of these things. Mr Twit was a twit. He was a born a twit. And now at the age of 60, he was an even bigger twit than ever. The hair on the Mr Twit's face didn't grow smooth and matted as it did on most hairy faced men. It grew in spikes that stuck out straight like bristles, like a nail brush. And how often did Mr Twit wash this bristly nail brushy face of his? The answer is never not even on Sundays. He hadn't washed it for years. Dirty beards. As you know, an ordinary, unhairy face like yours and mine simply gets a bit smudgy if it's not washed often enough. And there's nothing so awful about that. But a hairy face is a very different matter. Things cling to hairs, especially food. Things like gravy go right in amongst the hairs and stay there. You and I can wipe our face uh, with, with a flannel and we quickly look almost right again. But the hairy man cannot do that. We can also, if we are careful, eat our meals without spreading food all over our faces, but not so the hairy man. Watch carefully next time you see a hairy man eating his lunch and you will notice that even if he opens his mouth very wide, it is impossible for him to get a spoonful of beef stew or ice cream and chocolate sauce into it without leaving some of it on the hairs. Mr Twit didn't even bother to open his mouth wide when he ate. As a result, and because he never washed, there were always hundreds of bits of old breakfasts and lunches and suppers sticking to the hairs around his face. There weren't big bits, mind you, because he used to wipe those off with the back of his hand or his sleeve while he was eating. But if you look closely, not that you'd ever want to, you would see tiny little specks of dried up scrambled eggs stuck to the hairs and spinach and tomato ketchup and fish fingers and minced chicken livers and all the other disgusting things Mr Twit liked to eat. If you looked closer, hold your nose, ladies and gentlemen. If you peered deep into the moustachy bristles sticking up out over his upper lip, you would probably see much larger objects that had escaped the wipe of his hand, things that had been there for months and months, like a piece of maggoty green cheese or a mouldy old cornflake or even the slimy tail of a tin sardine. Because of all this, Mr Twit never went really hungry. By sticking out his tongue and curling it sideways to explore the hairy jungle around his mouth, he was always able to find a tasty morsel here and there to nibble on. What I'm trying to tell you about Mr Twit 
because he was a foul and smelly old man. He was an extremely horrid old man, as you will find out in just a moment. Mrs Twit. <coughs> Excuse me. Mrs Twit was no better than her husband. She did not, of course, have a hairy face. It was a pity because that, at any rate, would have hidden some of her fearful ugliness. Take a look at her. And there she is. There's Mrs Twit. Have you ever seen a woman with an uglier face than that? I doubt it. But the funny thing is that Mrs Twit wasn't born ugly. She'd had quite a nice face when she was young. The ugliness had grown upon her year by year as she got older. Why would that happen? I'll tell you. If a person has ugly thoughts, it begins to show on the face. And when that person has ugly thoughts every day, every week, every year, the face gets uglier and uglier until it gets so ugly you can hardly bear to look at it. A person who has good thoughts cannot ever be ugly. You can have a wonky nose and a crooked mouth and a double chin and sticky out teeth. But if you have good thoughts, they will shine out of your face like sunbeams and you will always look lovely. Nothing shone out of Mrs Twit's face. In her right hand, she carried a walking stick. She used to tell people that this was because she had warts growing on the sole of her left foot and walking was painful. But the real reason was she carried a stick was so that she could hit things with it. Things like dogs and cats and small children. And then there was a glass eye. Mrs Twit had a glass eye that was always looking the other way. So that's the first little four chapters of the Twits. The Twits are really horrible. We're going to learn more about them and all their disgustingness. So I hope you enjoyed that. Until next time, which will be very soon. Take care. Keep safe.